Sponsored by Delete Me. Good version of a bad idea. Bad version of a good idea. The good versions of many forgettable ideas. Lenovo's done it all over its 39 years in business. Honestly, I expected this crazy contraption from CES 2023 to land firmly in bad, bad territory. But what actually ended up happening is that this became the first new PC concept in years that really enchanted me, without then disappointing me when I actually started using it. I'm Michael Fisher, and it turns out the Yoga Book 9i is a good execution of a surprisingly good idea. If you missed that CES hands-on back in January, let me refresh you. When it's closed, it's easy to mistake the Yoga Book 9i for something more conventional, like its confusingly similarly named cousin, the Yoga 9i. From the outside, it's a thin, lightweight aluminum clamshell. Even when you open it, well, sure, it's novel. <laughs> but we've seen all-touch notebooks before, from Lenovo itself, back in its wilder days, and more recently from Microsoft, with the sadly canceled Surface Neo. It's through its bundled accessories that the Yoga Book finds its full expression. The case that protects the Bluetooth keyboard unfolds origami style into a pedestal. Drop the laptop onto its little book groove and pull out the pen or plop down the mouse, and you've got a mobile workstation with dual 13.3-inch OLEDs upon which to spread out. It just so you know, yes, I do understand how uh, over-the-top this looks. And many of you have also asked me just how sturdy the thing feels. Well, I've gone full workstation in cafes, aboard ferry boats, even on a regional jet. And the stand has always felt rock solid in both landscape and portrait mode. Of course, the whole idea of this machine is to give you that space when you need it, but also to give you options when you don't. So deploy it in the conventional laptop posture and tap the screen with eight fingers, you'll get a virtual keyboard and trackpad, complete with not bad haptic feedback. That because, let's face it, no one likes typing on a big virtual keyboard, at least not on Windows. You have another option. Drop the Bluetooth keyboard on top of it. Magnets hold it loosely in place to either the top or bottom half. Go high and you get a virtual trackpad below. Go low and the space above fills with glanceable information. This approach to a detached keyboard is inspired, I think. But I have to admit, I don't love the slippery feel of using a display as a trackpad. It was a really good move to package this thing with the mouse and keyboard included. Additionally, while these widgets remind me of the dual screen Asus laptops I've loved for years, Asus is far ahead when it comes to optimizing the software for this display space. This is easily the most undercooked corner of the whole experience. The weather widget shows wind forecasts in Chinese, despite the system language being set to English. I can't get Outlook to display any calendars or any inbox except the one I use for spam. And the so-called news tile seems to consist mostly of rage bait or fear-mongering bottom-of-the-barrel bilge. It's essentially a chum box being held up as news, and even taking a few minutes to try to tailor it didn't help at all. Is this what the majority of you are seeing as news on a computer? Is this why the world is as terrible as it is? Whatever, I just wish there were more options for widgets to place down here. Right now, it's, well, it's all kind of useless. As you'd expect from a Lenovo, the hinge pulls double duty as a Bowers & Wilkins speaker bar that's not too shabby from a sound standpoint. And thanks to its 360-degree range, you get all the other options convertibles have given us for years. You know, make it a tent, or a screen, or a tablet when the flight attendants come around and tell you to put away your laptops. Sneaky. There's even a special smart reader that lets you use it as a huge book. For all its versatility, though, this machine really just begs to be used in workstation mode. Walk up to it, and it'll detect your approach and automatically log you in with Windows Hello. Walk away, and it will lock itself automatically. I love this stuff, but if it creeps you out, you can disable the webcam with a switch on the side and log in manually. 
In terms of getting work done, mostly I use the upper screen as a creation area, writing scripts or emails up top while referencing notes or research down below. When watching Apple's WWDC, I kept the broadcast on one screen while tweeting my lukewarm takes on the other. And when even two workspaces weren't enough, I turned it 90 degrees and doubled it to four. While preparing for an upcoming episode of Living in the Future featuring AI, I built an episode outline on the top screen while using ChatGPT on the bottom one. On that 100-mile bike ride I took a couple weeks ago, I used one display to manage review notes while plotting my course on another. What? You didn't see that video? Yeah, no one did. Please, go watch it. It's a fun change of pace, I promise. Now, sometimes all you need is one screen, but even here, I actually prefer to leave the machine stacked because having a monitor this high off the desktop is a lot easier on my neck. Now, for the penny pinchers, or just pragmatic shoppers out there, yeah, there are mobile monitors for standard laptops, and they're much cheaper. But those can be finicky with exposed cables, and you need to set them up and break them down every time you deploy or stow your computer. Even the yoga book doesn't save you from all the awkwardness. You still need to carry the keyboard and mouse separately, and remember to turn them on and off whenever you settle in or move along. But they always connect instantly when turned on. While I expected a lot of waiting for a Bluetooth connection or weird double keystrokes when typing, in three weeks of testing, the keyboard has only freaked out twice, and all it took was a quick flip of the switch to set it right. If you've seen my earlier coverage on Weirdo Lenovo's, you know that that's a great track record. And as for the typing itself, I think it's quite comfortable, but not too far off from the feeling of my MacBook Air. And my biggest pleasant surprise came from the 80 watt hour battery, which I expected dual 13 inch OLEDs to drain with a quickness. But even on dub dub day, with lots of multitasking alongside that constant video stream and both monitors deployed the whole time, folks, it took me six hours to go from full to empty. And knock it down to a standard laptop and dim out the bottom screen, and I could easily see this being a nine or 10 hour machine as Notebook Check managed to hit in its review. Even the keyboard battery is impressive. In three weeks, I've only managed to knock it down to 80%. If you do manage to deplete the battery on the laptop, uh, you can pair the keyboard and mouse to your folding phone and stick it up on the stand. You know, just to be a real weirdo about things. That's not to say it's a grand slam dunk or a stolen home run or whatever sports analogy you would prefer. There are a couple disadvantages here. For one thing, the webcam, as you can see, it's still just okay. The auto exposure correction is a little slow. And for another, there are more serious disadvantages that you should know about before dropping a couple grand on this thing. Those, after this. You probably already know that your personal information is being bought, sold, and traded online. And if you didn't, well, sorry to give you the bad news. In fact, this privacy problem is so huge that you might even think, why bother trying to address it? It's impossible, but it's not. This video is sponsored by Delete Me, a simple subscription service that gives control of your personal data back to you. Just tell them who you are and they go to work scrubbing your private information from the web. I'm talking current and past addresses, names of your family members, property and court records. In seven days, you get a privacy report like this. Yep, this is my actual report. And just look at how many data brokers had my information. No wonder I get so many spam calls. Well, thanks to Delete Me, all these brokers are now removing my information. I didn't have to spend 10 hours doing it myself, and Delete Me will automatically repeat the process every three months. So take back control and delete your personal data from the web. Visit joindeleteme.com slash Mr. Mobile and use code Mr. Mobile for 20% off. Thanks to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. Okay, so what other sacrifices are you making if you want to build the Yoga Book 9i into your daily rotation? Well, for one thing, I hope you don't need a lot of I.O. Three Thunderbolt 4 ports is all you get, though at least you can charge the machine through any of them. There's no SD card slot, not even a headphone jack, which 
means you're stuck using Bluetooth. The Bose QC45s I'm borrowing from Qualcomm got along fine with the Yoga Book, but my Nothing Ear 2 review sample totally crashed and burned, getting choppy and ultimately refusing to connect. Speaking of crashes, the machine has hung twice, seemingly for no reason, requiring a reboot each time. And damn it, yet again, Lenovo has shipped a laptop with no backlight on its keyboard. I don't care if you're only typing in the dark once a month. This is a big, thick, rechargeable accessory, folks. There is no reason I should have to use it in the dark without a backlight. Also, those bad widgets aren't the only undercooked corners of the software. Lenovo has some of the most intrusive pop-ups I've ever seen, and it makes it harder to find useful features than it should be, dividing them between the Vantage and User Center apps. Both are littered with poor translations, typos, and there's even a whole section of the User Center still in Chinese. These may be unfinished corners of the software that'll be finalized over time, but you know what I say about review devices. They should be ready to be reviewed. Other minor issues, the displays are fairly dim, they top out at 60 hertz, and there are no discrete graphics for video editing or high-end gaming. In fact, even viewing a folder full of 4K content was an exercise in patience on my Core i7 review unit. And my last major complaint is one you'll find as well if you switch postures a lot. Check it out. If you start out in workstation mode with an app on the bottom window, then you convert to laptop mode, when you try to call that app back into focus, the computer still tries to open it on the lower display, which of course means it's obscured by the keyboard. You need to drag it back up onto the main screen to use it. Also, if you run any program that changes the display resolution or throws up a full screen dialog box, well, say goodbye to your trackpad for a while. And switching between orientations and postures is you know, about as elegant as Microsoft ever manages to make it. Same time, some products are worth putting up with the rough edges for, because they deliver an experience you just can't get with any other kind of machine. And for me, this is one such machine. I've never truly recovered from the day I unboxed this device, took four photos of it in four different postures, and just giggled at the reality that they were all the same PC. Yes, for those of us nerdy enough to know what it was, this is indeed the Surface Neo we never got. But for normal folks who got used to multiple monitors in their homes during the pandemic and don't want to give up that convenience as they pick work back up on the go, this is great for them too. It's certainly not perfect and it's certainly not cheap, but there's still nothing quite like the YogaBook 9i. And I'm certainly not the first to say that it's far better than many of us expected it to be. Now, this isn't the only Lenovo I've been waiting for for a while, folks. That long-delayed foldable PC, the second-generation ThinkPad X1 Fold, well, the company says it's still coming, someday. To make sure that you don't miss the review when and if it arrives, subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube. And while you wait, my review of the Asus ZenBook Fold is a pretty good time, too. This review was made possible by a YogaBook 9i review sample provided by Lenovo, but as always, I gave Lenovo no editorial input, no copy approval rights, not even an early preview. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.